Hello, I'm the new Michio, and if you're wondering whether I just survived a small electrical explosion before recording this video, don't worry, this look is intentional. Some people go for, distinguished scientist, I go for, just accidentally stuck a fork in the Hadron Collider. Welcome to Beyond Parallax. Tonight, we're going to cross the invisible line between wonder and reality into the heart of a mystery that's been perplexing astronomers and igniting imaginations around the globe. The object known as 3 I Atlas, or simply 3 Atlas, has become one of the most fascinating stories of our age. What we once thought was a simple interstellar comet has slowly transformed into a cosmic enigma layered with anomalies, secrets, and perhaps intelligence beyond our recognition. When we first heard about 3 Atlas, most of us expected a faint streak of light crossing the sky, another comet on its graceful fall toward the sun. But what telescopes caught was far more intriguing. A body that refused to behave like any comet we've studied before. Its surface reflection didn't match its brightness curve. Its rotation broke expected patterns, and even its tail, if we can call it that, seemed to shimmer with an almost engineered-like rhythm, pulsing with intervals we couldn't explain. Now, here's where things get interesting. For months, arrays from NASA and the European Space Agency have been mapping the surface of three atlas using deep spectrum imaging, radar echo, and reflectometry. What they found wasn't the dusty ice crust typical of normal comets. No, this thing's surface had geometric complexity, lines, patterns, ridges curving at precise intervals. Some scientists thought it was coincidence, but geometry doesn't lie. Nature loves randomness. This, this felt deliberate. Imagine seeing a mountain range formed in a perfect spiral, symmetrical, smooth, almost alien. That's what the probes picked up. But rather than jumping to conspiracies, the researchers turned to physics. And what they discovered next shattered the traditional models. Because among the readings, they detected magnetic pulses. Not random outbursts, but cyclical, repeating every 143 seconds, synchronized with the object's rotation. Could it be that this magnetic rhythm is just a coincidence? Perhaps. But as new data arrived, physicists noticed the frequency slightly accelerating as the object neared solar influence, as though it were reacting to sunlight, adapting. Now, I'm going to stop and ask you to imagine this, a rock from another star system, drifting in the cosmic dark for possibly millions of years, suddenly awakening when it enters the warmth of our sun. Does that sound like coincidence or design? But before we spiral too far into speculation, let's ground ourselves. Three Atlas, observed by the James Webb Telescope earlier this year, revealed traces of diatomic carbon, nickel, iron oxides, and here's the shocker, silicate glass. Yes, glass, woven microscopically across its surface, forming a sheen never observed before on any interstellar object. Some say it's the product of extreme heat, the kind produced by near-solar passes. But others, more daring, suggest that it's something akin to shielding, like a self-healing skin protecting a delicate core. Could this mean 3 Atlas is more than a comet? Well, officially, both NASA and ESA still classify it as an interstellar body, a wanderer frozen in time. But unofficially, several scientists, myself included, have begun calling it a reactive object, something that responds, maybe even communicates, through its emissions and light pattern. During one observation window, scientists beamed low-frequency radio pulses at it in a controlled experiment. Most of the signals dissipated as expected, except for one. At exactly 22 minutes after the final transmission, an unexpected echo returned weak but structured. No natural interference could explain the timing. It was almost as if the object had reflected back a mirrored pattern, as though acknowledging the transmission. And what did it say? Well, nothing in human terms. But signal analysis at the SETI lab showed a repeated harmonic signature, the same interval that traced its rotation, 143 seconds. Coincidence or response? That's the million dollar question. Now let's go closer to the surface itself. Using combined radar imaging from Mars orbit, astronomers captured a high-resolution reconstruction of one of three Atlas's hemispheres. The result left everyone speechless. 
There was a region roughly 60 kilometers across showing smooth hexagonal tiling like the scales of an immense metallic lattice. It wasn't reflective enough to be pure metal, yet it wasn't rock either. The texture resembled vitrified basalt, lava glass, but organized in perfect six-sided symmetry. In nature, hexagons aren't rare. We see them in honeycombs and basalt columns. But on this scale and with such alignment, you begin to wonder, are we seeing nature's consistency or someone's intention? The pressure maps showed hot spots beneath the lattice. Something inside was warm. That, my friends, should be impossible. At the temperature's three atlas experiences, far beyond the frost line, heat is supposed to dissipate rapidly. Yet the inner layers were retaining energy. The hypothesis? Subsurface chemical reactions. But another possibility existed, one even more provocative. Internal power generation. Picture it. An object older than our solar system, self-sustaining, generating magnetothermal energy while crossing interstellar space. That's when I said, this isn't just debris, it's a cosmic mechanism. And if that mechanism had purpose, the universe just got a lot more interesting. Let's talk about the light. A peculiar glow has been observed through multiple instruments, a teal color faintly pulsating across the surface. To most, it's just light refracting off ionized dust. But the spectral fingerprint tells a stranger story. Buried within that turquoise hue is a narrow emission peak at 557.7 nanometers, a frequency consistent with excited oxygen. But there's a secondary peak, faint yet deliberate, oscillating slightly out of sync. Synthetic? Unknown. You'd think that would be enough. But no, as the comet turned, a shadow, a moving one, appeared across one of its poles, changing position like something rotating within. The discovery of that internal shift sparked one of the largest debates in modern astrophysics. Are we witnessing a reactive geological process or a system under control? And this brings me to the most human part of our story. When the James Webb team released the infrared image showing the thermal signature pulsing from that exact region, the message sent shockwaves through the scientific community, not because of what they found, but because of what they couldn't explain. I'll tell you what they didn't publish publicly. The waveform of that pulse bears a five to three to two ratio, a precise harmonic found in music, engineering, and even biological rhythms. Coincidence? Possibly, but one too many to ignore. Maybe three Atlas isn't signaling. Maybe it's humming. We humans often dream of contact, but what if contact has already been happening quietly, not through words, but through frequencies, geometry, and the universal language of mathematics? I'll pause you there, because this isn't the kind of discovery that ends with headlines or press conferences. It's the kind that changes paradigms. Welcome to the frontier, where science meets mystery, where certainty gives way to awe. And that's what we explore here together on Beyond Parallax. But the surface secrets of three atlas don't stop there. As deeper data emerged, the heat signatures hinted at something even stranger, a pattern of shifting thermal zones that seemed to migrate across the comet's crust, like a heartbeat traveling through frozen stone. At first, researchers thought it might be a form of outgassing, ice pockets venting as sunlight struck. But the pattern didn't match known sublimation cycles. Instead, the pulse's traced pathways, coordinates, points aligning with the object's rotational axis and forming a symmetrical network reminiscent of planetary mapping grids. Naturally occurring? Perhaps. But how does frozen rock decide where to release gas in mathematically perfect loops? The truth is, every discovery raised new questions. And every explanation opened another door. When the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter captured its first long-range observation of three atlas passing in the distance, there was something surreal about it. A shimmer, a faint flare, not just light reflecting, but modulation, as if the surface itself was flickering intentionally. Data compression artifacts? Maybe. But to the human eye, it looked almost like a signal, a blinking Morse code written in sunlight. Now imagine yourself there, orbiting the red planet, looking through a camera lens at something born beyond the stars, a traveler older than Earth itself. You'd feel the same tingling sense of recognition the scientists felt. The feeling that maybe, just maybe something, was looking back. 
So what's actually under that crystalline crust? Based on simulations derived from radar density data, we're talking layers stacked like armor, each one denser and more heat resistant than the one before. The models suggest an internal cavity roughly 18 to 20% of the total mass, hollow space. That would be like discovering a building inside a mountain. One astrophysicist from the European Space Agency described it best. It behaves less like a comet and more like a programmable object. And that phrasing programmable gave birth to a theory now gaining traction, the resonance hypothesis. It proposes that three atlas might generate self-sustaining fields, adjusting its internal magnetism in sync with solar radiation, something akin to a feedback system. I know it sounds unbelievable. I said the same thing the first time I read the data, but consider this. When Voyager 1 crossed interstellar space, its signal degradation rate was linear, predictable. When scientists tried to measure three atlases' magnetic field as it crossed Jupiter's orbit, the response wasn't linear. It spiked, bent, then leveled off again, almost organic. To me, that's the most poetic part of this story. Because maybe what we're seeing isn't alien technology per se, but alien adaptation. Perhaps some objects carry memory within matter itself. Perhaps physics, over time, develops consciousness the way coral reefs develop life, slowly, inevitably. Let's talk about composition for a moment. Three Atlas doesn't match the ratios of silicate and carbon we expect from interstellar debris. It's heavier in iron, by at least 40%. That means denser, older material, forged under extreme stellar conditions. Some analyses even point to metal hydrides impossible to form anywhere except near neutron stars. Which begs the question, what kind of origin story could give rise to something like this? If you peel back the surface, the deeper layers seem structured in stacked hexagonal plates, each roughly a meter thick, bonded but flexible. When exposed to simulations of solar radiation, these plates appeared to ripple, a small oscillation, as if they were designed to distribute thermal energy evenly. Natural mineral expansion? Possibly. But if intentional, that design would make the object nearly indestructible, capable of surviving star encounters for eons. Every night I look at the data, I feel two competing sensations, humility and thrill. Humility, because this might be the closest thing we've ever found to another civilization's craftsmanship. Thrill, because even if this is natural, it means nature itself is far more ingenious than we ever imagined. And here's where things take a leap. About four weeks ago, the James Webb team finalized an analysis using deep infrared imaging, targeting what astronomers now call the polar lattice region. Beneath that shimmering layer, the data showed a faint rhythmic vibration, like a mechanical pulse. Its strength was irregular, but repeating every 11 minutes. Some dismissed it as instrumental interference. Others think differently. Think about how we explore the universe. Everything we build, probes, satellites, telescopes, transmits data through vibration, waveforms carrying meaning. What if Three Atlas does the same, but on a scale beyond our comprehension? When I proposed that question during a symposium, the room fell into silence. Because if that's true, if this object vibrates not randomly, but deliberately, it means Three Atlas could be communicating. Not with words, not with radio pulses, but through resonance across the electromagnetic spectrum. A signal too subtle for our instruments to interpret directly, but ordered enough to suggest intention. And if it is communicating, what is it saying? Here's the haunting part. One of the vibrational frequencies, the 143 second base pulse, matches the Schumann resonance range from Earth's atmosphere. That's the frequency at which our planet itself hums. Could that be a coincidence? Or could it be that somewhere, sometime, whoever sent this interstellar traveler aligned it to resonate with life-bearing worlds like ours? That's when the question shifts from what is it to why now? Because every major interstellar visitor teaches us timing is everything. Remember Oumuamua? It arrived unexpectedly, exited quickly, leaving us puzzled. But three atlas is lingering, slowly, gracefully weaving inside our solar system, allowing extended observation as if designed to be seen. There's a chilling symmetry to that idea, a sense of choreography across cosmic distances. Perhaps we're not witnessing invasion or accident, but an unfolding message, 
one encoded in behavior rather than transmission. Now, let's dive into one of the most beautiful theories to emerge from this mystery, the reflective mind hypothesis. It suggests that bodies like three atlas might act as interstellar memory banks, preserving physical data layers about their journeys, radiation scars, ion impacts, even bits of magnetic history embedded like a record groove. If decoded, they could reveal where the object has been. Each scratch could be a cosmic diary. And that's not science fiction, it's physics. Matter retains its past. Every crystal lattice keeps a signature of the forces that shaped it. Maybe when we study three atlas, we're not just exploring an object, we're reading a story written in hydrogen, carbon, and silence. And what a story it tells. Through spectroscopy, its outer ice revealed high concentrations of formaldehyde and methanol, molecules that on Earth form precursors to amino acids, the seeds of life. If those compounds were preserved within its core, then somewhere in the history of this galaxy, conditions were fertile enough to plant the chemistry of creation inside a wandering body. In that case, maybe Three Atlas isn't only an object of mystery, but a messenger carrying evidence that life, in some form, was meant to travel. That we, too, are its echo. I once said, the universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it's stranger than we can imagine. And standing here with you, through this microphone, I feel that more than ever. Because each observation of Three Atlas reminds us that science is not about certainty, it's about curiosity bold enough to face the unknown. Perhaps years from now, when the probes reach closer range, we'll finally glimpse beneath that lattice shell. Maybe we'll find geological strata or maybe machinery. Either way, the result will expand our consciousness as a species. Until then, we wait, we study, we listen. It's humbling to remember, every photon that leaves its surface takes minutes, sometimes hours, to reach us. Each one carries a whisper of cosmic history. When we decode that light, we're not just learning about matter, we're meeting an ancient traveler. So what's the final revelation? Maybe the real secret of Three Atlas is not what it's made of, but what it reminds us of, that curiosity is the oldest form of communication in the universe. And that, perhaps, by observing it, we've already answered its call. I'm the new Michio, and this is Beyond Parallax. Keep looking up, keep wondering, and remember, every strange thing out there might just be a mirror showing us who we're becoming.